Okay, so I'm just I'm just gonna go ahead and show it to you, and you let me know if you see it. Okay. All right. Here it goes. Did you see it? No. All right. Let's try it a little bit differently this time. Thinking about it now, the build-up to this scene is actually about as magical as the moment itself here. I've come back to this particular season of Haikyuu more than any other because of just how long it's taken me to properly process everything presented to us this time around compared to prior seasons. The sheer amount of genuinely heartwarming narratives they jam-packed into 24 episodes is pretty impressive alone. Even among those though, that little orange firecracker always seems to find a way to stand out from the crowd. We start the season off with Minimi heading back to school for the very first time since Karasuno's victory against Shira Torizawa. Despite his efforts to become a more versatile and effective attacking force for the team though, it was Kageyama and surprisingly Sakishima's efforts that are recognized and rewarded as the former is invited to the All Japan Youth Camp, while the latter is invited by coach Washijo Sensei of Shira Torizawa for a first year training camp uniting top tier talent within the prefecture. Hinata's feelings of struggling to stay afloat despite his best efforts is best symbolized as he's riding uphill after school while reflecting on the many ways he's falling behind his peers and losing his right to stand on the court. Literally drowning in his own frustration at this point, do you think that he A. talks to his coach for advice, B. studies his game to figure out gaps in his technique, or C. crashes the first year training camp? It's C. There is a certain degree of sense to his albeit unhinged logic though. He's the kind of guy who learns by doing and observing things in real time, often in high intensity situations. In his eyes, observing these other high level players in his grade on his level is exactly the kind of inspiration he needs to learn how to proceed and move forward with his game. And being the lovable idiot he is, he doesn't get turned away like everyone expects him to. The seemingly iron-faced Washijo sensei flatly and abruptly lets everyone know all at once that he can stay. As a ball boy. And boy, does he remind him of it throughout the duration of this camp. For context's sake, Washijo in his days as a volleyball player was forced to confront the limitation of his skill and technique in the face of sheer height. He found the vertical handicap impossible to overcome and therefore thinks that this is the perfect opportunity to teach Shoyo this lesson early. To Washijo, Hinata's barely even fit to be a ball boy, and even coach Ukai implies that he may have bitten off more than he can chew, but encourages him to see the challenge through to the end. These words intended to crush Hinata and bring him down to earth, however, will soon help him expand his horizons. His hunger absolutely refuses to allow him to pass up even the tiniest chance of improvement with eagerness. To Washijo Sensei's annoyance. Hater. <coughs> With that said, this is the kind of challenge that requires a bit more than a simple can-do attitude. The frustration of constantly being reminded of his shortcomings by others that's been building all season, not to mention the constant berating and ostracizing by Washijo, finally begin to approach a peak early on in the camp. Coach Ukai realizes that this is exactly the kind of opportunity that Shoyo needs. A chance to work on building his desperately underdeveloped fundamental volleyball skills but in true wise mentor fashion, leaves it up to him to figure this out for himself. Despite the fact that he basically admits that he's the reason why Hinata is still stuck in a state of underdevelopment and therefore can't figure out why he's lacking, but we'll just go ahead and ignore that for now. Back to Hinata. Once his frustration boils over, he realizes that he needs to rethink his approach to his roadblock and desperately searches to figure out exactly how to do so. This is the exact clicking point that literally expands his worldview and understanding of the game implicitly. Once he comes to terms with the fact that he's nowhere on the court, he instead focuses on all the other aspects of the game that he wouldn't or couldn't have considered from the perspective of an actual match. He observes the players, analyzes their movements and techniques, watches the court from various angles and points of view, and breaks down all the information he's able to extract from the court 
from the position of a spectator while hoping to glean even the tiniest bit of information that might help improve his game. And instead of that tiny bit of information he was hoping for, ends up with an entire treasure trove, so full and overflowing he'd never be able to find the bottom. Through his keen observation of his peers, he not only learns to refine and upgrade his skill and technique, he also begins to develop a sense for the flow of the game itself, allowing him to now predict and read the direction of a play as it's happening. This focus on observation and individual skill culminates in his remembering of the split step. A simple miniature hop step often seen in sports like football and basketball that allows Hinata's reflexes to keep up with the speed of his eyes, leading to... Nope, nope, not yet. Not there yet. But soon. Now, this is certainly no overnight transformation. What it is he's trying to learn is the kind of skill you only build through practice and repetition. This is yet another point where we can see Hinata's growth in real time, as once he realizes the vast open sea of growth ahead of him, immediately he abandons all intention of actually playing volleyball during the first year camp, and instead uses his ball boy duties to devote himself completely to his new self-imposed training to read and respond to the flow of a play as a defender like Nishinoya might. With his new direction, his reignited passion is intensely felt by the other players around him. Considering the fact that they've all lost to him at least once and now want to even the score, this passion of his becomes contagious, and he even motivates Tsukishima to put in more effort into his practice as well. And that's not all either. He also teaches one of the invited first years a crucial basic skill for leveling up his game too. Now, this time when we see him riding his bike uphill after the camp, the vibe is completely different. He's still struggling uphill, but now with intent. He's not wildly looking for answers, he's learning to target and focus his efforts carefully to reach his goals. Hinata's mental transformation is complete before he even finishes his ball boy duties during camp, and the fruits of his labor are immediately noticed by his teammates who are downright unnerved by the sheer contrast between the player he's become versus the player he was a mere few days ago. But even that's nothing compared to what happens during the Inarizaki match where his evolution finally completes itself. Hinata's eyes and body are still slightly out of sync up until this very match, so despite some of his best saves so far this series, he hasn't really been able to display what he is truly capable of. In episode 15, we see him begin to compensate for this by using his newly acquired analytical ability to invent an ingenious way to handle blocking Osamu, a player with much more skill and experience than he has right now. He also uses this reading ability to compliment Tanaka during his slump in a way that helps him to invent new ways to contribute to the team when his attacks prove ineffective. Then there's the receive. Oh god, the receive. Just look at it. Look at it. Look at my son. Look at my boy. I seriously turned into a proud father here and you need only look at Kageyama's assessment of what happened here to properly grasp the beauty of it. For starters, Ojiro Aran has been a problem. He's an attacking force often compared to Ushiwaka himself, and Karasuno never truly got the hang of dealing with him. Despite this though, not only did Shoyo read his approach and attack, he was also able to respond to it in time, receive the ball in such a way to reduce its velocity while giving it ample height, while also aiming it perfectly towards the center. See this? This right here? Thing of beauty. As if that wasn't enough, Hinata's contributions don't just stop at his athleticism or his analytical skill. His hunger and resilience, despite facing the toughest match of their season yet, fires up his teammates the same way the first years during the training camp were inspired, keeping their spirits from being crushed at a crucial point in the late game. So much so that the star players on the opposing team can sense this rallying effect that Shoyo's spirit has on his teammates, and they even catch a whiff of it as well. Okay, okay, okay. It's time. Match point. Karasuno serve. Tsukishima's up. The serve's short. Inarizaki struggles to control the ball, resulting in a free ball for Karasuno. They begin to attack frantically, understanding that this is likely their final opportunity at a clean win, or else it's time to go home. However, Coach Ukai immediately realizes that they're burning themselves out. He urges themselves to calm down and pull back, and immediately we see Hinata disappear from the action. This isn't just a setup for what's about to happen next by diverting our focus towards the rest of the team during a high intensity situation. He's actually paying attention. 
Turns out he's the only one paying attention. And thinking back on that one trick he taught his fellow first year at training camp, he takes things into his own hands to reset the team. The scene marks the crystallization of everything that Hinata's been working for. Not only throughout the entire season, it's also the result of his constant evolution leading back all the way to the first season. It's at this exact point that Hinata is no longer some volleyball nerd and he's not just obsessed with spiking or running and jumping, and he's no longer only useful as an offensive force or a decoy. He's reading and understanding everything that's happening on both sides of the net and trying to find ways to contribute to his team in ways that only he can. And as a cherry on top, he even picks up a new rival in Mia Atsumi the best high school setter in all of Japan, who also attended the All Japan Youth Camp with Kageyama that I mentioned earlier. When you pull back, watching Hinata reap the fruits of his efforts and training is only part of it. He spends just as much time frustrated at his diminished relevance compared to his peers as he does his skill. But now, he's caught the eye of everyone in the stadium and those watching from beyond including the current Olympic Japanese volleyball team's captain. Now, if only season 5 would finally come around and we can maybe see where this all goes- 